what was happening with Prigozhin. That was the question. Was he too powerful or influential for even Putin to touch? Now, that was the question. Well, something's happened. Prigozhin is dead. That's what the mysterious plane crash tells you. Now, you can ask what happened. No one knows. Remember, Vladimir Putin has actually put out a condolence. He's put out a very warm condolence message to Prigozhin. But it's not surprising that many people are saying that the Russian President Vladimir Putin is still very much abiding by his playbook. Even today, anyone who crosses Putin dies, disappears, or is jailed. And joining me to talk about that, this is all just conspiracy theories. Dr. Dr. Gilbert, Dr. Rao, international affairs analyst, author, and historian. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for, for joining us. Now, there are many who felt that the fate of Prigozhin was more or less written the moment he actually called for that mutiny and then called it off. Um, he's dead now. Many people have been saying, how long is he going to survive? He's dead. Putin is putting out a condolence. What do you think actually happened in this case? A day ago, it seemed that perhaps Mr. Putin was the man who gave the order for the demise of Prigozhin. However, that's a day ago, and things change and news changes. A day ago, the first reports were that Prigozhin's plane was shot down by air, by air to, to by ground to air missiles. That would suggest that the Russian military had done it, and it would suggest that it had done it on orders. That's a day ago. Today, American military intelligence has published uh, in the newspapers uh, the, the assurances that there were no missiles that struck that plane, and the likelihood is that it was a bomb on board. Now, why Americans would have this superior intelligence and why they would share it with the public is a separate question. The point, however, is that if there were a bomb on board, then anyone could have been responsible for the murder of Prigozhin, and not necessarily uh, the Russian government. And in that case, Mr. Putin's expressions of condolences would actually be genuine and not hypocritical. The Mr. But, but you know, if I could just, if I could was, just interrupt you, if I could just interrupt you, you know, yes, on that note, please. yes, one case, fine, it happened twice. It's a coincidence. Three times, it's a coincidence. But I was just reading out a long list. There are a very long list of people who've ever crossed Vladimir Putin's path. They all seem to fall out of windows or get poisoned or die mysterious deaths or in, end up in prison. So is it just conspiracy theory to say that, or is it just bad luck? It's just bad karma that anybody who ever crosses Vladimir Putin, something rather unpleasant happens to him or her? First of all, the list that you gave is partial and, and does not take into account the many people who have crossed Mr. Putin and who have not suffered any ill effects. You are ignoring the, the, uh, the record of Mr. Putin as a man of his word. He was a man of his word to, his, uh, to the man who helped bring him to power, that is Boris Yeltsin, that none of Yeltsin's entourage would suffer any inconvenience when Mr. Putin came to power. And that has been the case. There are in the entourage of, of, of uh, Yeltsin the widow, who is in charge of the, uh, who is the, the, the leader of the Yeltsin Center in Ekaterinburg, which is viciously anti-Putin. Not a hair on her head or an institution has suffered. There is the daughter of, uh, of Mayor uh, Sobchak, who, with her mother, the widow of Sobchak, are viciously anti-Putin, and they've crossed his path many times. Nothing has happened to them because Mr. Putin observed his pledge, and he's a man of honor. He made a pledge that Mr. Prigozhin would not suffer. And one has to suppose now, in light of the latest news, that this was a bomb and not a, a, a ground-to-air missile, okay, that so, he kept his word and was not involved in this. So Moreover, many people, but, but, no, let, 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 but, but let me just ask. You mentioned um, Mr. Berzovsky. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. Uh, what about him? Mr. Berzovsky is reason to believe that he was murdered by the MI6 not by the Russians, and precisely because he was in the point of negotiating with the FSB a return to Russia, which the Brits didn't like very much. Okay. So, they, look, they we take other examples from your list, the same would come up. The Skripals, yes, commonly accepted that uh, Putin was behind it, commonly accepted 
in the Financial Times. But I'm sorry, that is not necessarily the, okay. the voice of God. Can I just ask you about Prigozhin, though? Uh, many people would, yes. would ask this question, like they asked when Alexei Navalny went back to Russia and was promptly jailed, presumably for a decade altogether. What was mm -hmm. it with Prigozhin? I mean, he, he led a mutiny against Vladimir Putin. It didn't work out. He was pardoned, in a sense, and granted amnesty. He's still flying around all over Russia, trying to have, have, have that same influence as he did. Did he, did he really believe he was untouchable? I believe he was insane. And uh, because no sane person would stage the mutiny that he did, knowing what forces would be brought against him. No sane person would, stay, would violate his agreements to exile in Belarus and then crisscross Russia, as you have noted in, in your introduction, as if nothing happened. The man had lost contact with reality. Now, he would have had many enemies. He was a self-promoter. He made uh, despicable remarks about the leaders of the Russian armed forces. And there were many people who would have been happy to see him dead, not just Mr. Putin, or not even Mr. Putin. All right, so you're saying Prigozhin, in a sense, was, was inviting trouble by a lot of what he was doing, but it's not necessarily that Vladimir Putin was the person who was behind his, 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 his demise. That, that's essentially what you're saying. It's a country, 145 million people, with many different points of view, and with many people who have access to destructive uh, yeah. uh, uh, devices. So it is a little bit convenient to, to pretend that Mr. Putin runs everything that goes on in the country, but it's utterly unrealistic. All right. He would not have had an interest in violating his pledge to Lukashenko not to touch Mr. Mr. Uh, Prigozhin. And okay. that is what you're saying happened. So okay. Dr. Dr. Rao, thank you so much for joining us with that perspective. And yes, look, obviously, till we know what exactly happened, till any proof comes out on any of the cases that we're talking about, all we can say is mysterious circumstances. And I think that's the way to leave it. Thank you so much for joining us. It was great, that, uh, great, great to get that perspective from you.